Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and we're going to continue to mess around with Game Maker. So this is going to be a little bit more of a lax tutorial. Um, we made our room menu. In this tutorial, I want to go over a, at least one way to make uh, your opening menu. So when you start your game, you're always going to start in the first room that's underneath rooms. But if you want to get to the next room, we have to use a command. Uh, the command that we would use is... room underscore go to and inside of this command you can write next and that'll push you to the next room down but I usually I almost never really use that I just type in the name of the room I want to go to right now we only have one room so uh, we'll have to create a new room for this so we'll leave that how it is let's go to rooms <clears throat> create a new room we're gonna call this one rm underscore um, town. We'll call this one town. Tuan. Town. And the width of this room... We'll keep it the same. I'm sure we're going to edit some things later on. 1280 by 720. Just going to hit OK on that. Now, inside of here, you can see that a box will pop up and it'll show you all of the rooms that you've actually made. So we can click on it too. So this event right here, this object, um, has a create event that'll go to that room, but we're not going to use that for anything. I just sort of wanted to go over how to switch rooms. Um, in order to make a menu, um, we could either make a for loop and insert uh, cases to show each text option, or we can make the art for the rooms and uh, have the player like mouse over the rooms to click like start game or something or uh, mouse over the objects. Anyway, let's go ahead and do that. We'll create a new sprite. We're gonna call this one SPR underscore start game. We'll add a new one. Let's go 64 by 32. <clears throat> we'll zoom in. We're not going to make anything fancy. We're going to just do a simple start. I would rather do this in, uh... you know what, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get GIMP, um, but I'm going to use Photoshop. If you have Photoshop, you can use Photoshop. So I'm going to create a new um, file and we're going to make this one, we'll say 128 by 64. I'm going to call this start game. And we will zoom in. Control plus. <clears throat> and I think we'll just go with some simple text. We're going to have to go super small on the text though. Or let's go, yeah, we'll just say start. <clears throat> okay, and what I want to do is go to the magic eraser and Use the magic eraser tool. First, we're going to confirm that. So we'll use this and go like that. Then magic eraser, the background. So you see how the background went checkered? That's going to make it transparent so you only see the start, not the background. All right, we're going to save this as a PNG file. But let's find a location for it. Um, we'll go game maker. Let's do a new folder inside here. We're going to call this Part resource. Call the start PNG, start game.png. Okay. So now we can hit we can check that, but we're basically gonna delete this. 
Instead, we're going to do load sprite. So for our load sprite, we're going to find it inside of Game Maker. Actually, I want Driftwood Gaming, Game Maker, Art Resources, start. All right, so there we go. We'll go ahead and center that and hit OK. So now we've got our sprite for start game. Let's create an object. We already created the object for object one. So we're going to change this event, actually. Change event, mouse left released. So now when we have our mouse on it and we left, uh, re we release the left mouse button, it's going to run this code of room go to town. But we actually need to check if the mouse is in the same position uh, as the object. So we'll have to do that. Let's go ahead and call this obj underscore start. We're going to give it the sprite uh, start game. Hit OK. We're going to go to the menu. We're going to delete the player object and we're going to go to objects and add the start. So we'll put that right here. <clears throat> if uh, you wanna like put it in dead center, there's a thing you can do to center it. So I could have it all the way over here and I could still make it appear in the center of the room with some code. So let's go to our object start and go to properties. And we're gonna add a create event. I know we just had one, but we're gonna add we changed it, so uh, when the object is created, we're going to go x equals um, room underscore width divided by 2, end line, and we're going to go y equals room underscore height divided by 2, end line. So now when the object object is created, it's going to put the X and the Y um, dead center because we're going to take half, half the width and half the height. So it's going to be right in the center no matter where we put it. And to illustrate that, um, let's go to the menu. To illustrate that, I'm going to put the start button all the way in the top left corner. But when we start, you're going to see that it's going to be dead center. There it is. And see, when I left clicked, it jumped to the other gray screen. What I can do to show that we're switching maps, actually. So let's go to the menu. And what we're going to do is go to background. So we're going to set the background color to black. Or let's make it. Yeah, black's fine. Well, if you remember the the next map we didn't change the background so it's still gray so when we left click it's gonna go to the next map uh, or go to the room underscore town so we left click nothing's happening if I click on start it goes boom really really cool really really simple but you can repeat this process let's go ahead and do it again We'll just go new, 128 by 64, and we're going to call this game end. Press control plus, we're going to zoom in, go with the text, and we're going to say end. actually want to make this a little bit bigger well maybe not because then the text will be different we kind of want to have the same size of text so we'll just center this and uh, yeah that looks fine okay and we'll go to this little selector tool to get us out of the highlighted mode that way we can go to the magic eraser 
and delete the background. If it's not working, change the tolerance to 1 and opacity to 100 and then it'll work. You might also have to drag this to the the drag the what do you call it? If there's a little thing right here, you can left click and drag that into the trash bin thing and it'll let you edit the layer. We are going to save this as gameend.png. Um, PNG is a good uh, extension because it makes really really small file size for for the art. So let's go to create a new sprite. Let's load sprite. We're gonna go with end. Okay. Center that. Okay. We're gonna make a new object. Create object. We're gonna call it obj underscore game end. We're gonna award this object the sprite. Oh, we didn't name the sprite, huh? Okay, so let's go back to the sprite properties. Or we can just rename it. SPR underscore game end. Okay. So now our object game end has the sprite game end. We're going to add a... Uh, it doesn't need... Oh yeah, we can do a create event. Because we want it to be centered too. So let's go X equals room height. Oh no, room width. Divided by 2 semicolon y equals room height divided by 2 but what we want to do uh, it'll be exactly in the same place as the start so we need to make it go lower than the start so if we add to the y amount it's gonna go down so we need to add something so we're gonna say y equals how many pixels let's say 64 plus room height divided by 2 and let's see how that works we might need to tweak that a little bit let's add another event we're gonna go to mouse and left released and we're gonna add some code and we're gonna say game underscore end oh it's a function so we have to do open and close parentheses so game end function and then we do a end line okay and we're gonna hit ok to that let's go to our menu now same thing since we've uh, defined its position on its creation code um, we don't really have to put it in any specific place but we do have to put it on the map somewhere so I could put it anywhere and it's gonna go you know somewhere below start but just for the sake of simplicity let's just put it like in its general vicinity to where we would think it should be something like that hit start and play okay start and end that actually looks fine so if we left click I'm left clicking around nothing's happening if I click on start the game goes to that We've already seen that. I should have clicked on end, but I'll show you. Nothing happens. If we click on end, the game ends. Cool. That's one way to do a start menu, uh, opening menu. Um, what we could do is on the town map, we did make a player object, right? Go to objects, go to object player, boom, we have them there. And now when we're teleported to this map, our object will be here, our player, that we can move around. can hit OK on that. Let's edit the object player. Uh, I did not mean to insert a new object, but we will need that eventually. Let's edit this one. On the step event, what we're going to do is instead of two, instead of one, uh, sorry, instead of one, we're going to do two. That's going to give us a little more speed. So we click start. Now we're on our map that we can move around on. So one step at a time, guys, we're going to build a Zelda style game. Little piece by little piece with random tutorials in between the game. 
Um, if you have any special requests, put them in the comments below. You know, my knowledge of Game Maker is limited, but with the amazing F1 help file, we can find how we can figure out how to do almost anything. And if we work together, um, I'm sure a lot of you already know how to use Game Maker, and maybe you can show me stuff too. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this quick tutorial on how you could do a basic, you know, very basic menu to start your game, um, give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps me out. Um, lets me know you're interested in this sort of thing. Um, we're going to take it very slowly, but we will get there. We're going to build a Zelda clone, um, however long it takes. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.